the sign said the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tenement halls and whispered in the sounds of silence. Shh, that's right, Raptors fan. Enjoy the silence. Tomorrow is the first date I had marked on my calendar for when I would need to get back to making videos because I've been silent ever since I talked around the trade deadline and binged a bunch of videos. And now I'm gonna binge out a few more for this off season. And it starts with the silence that I hope to hear tomorrow from Gary Trent Jr. It would mean that Gary has opted into his player option. Now I know you've been led to believe that that's not likely and it may not happen. He may actually decline it and seek a little more money. But the truth is Gary's value is not far off where it should be for this season. And if he signs a short term deal or opts into this player option, he will use this coming season to project himself into an even bigger contract than he has now. So in spite of the fact that I want to talk about trade speculation and my draft wish list for the upcoming draft, this, this is the video that I had earmarked to come back and make a bunch of videos on because it is the first moment in reality where we start to see where the franchise is headed and it all comes down to tomorrow's date. So let me show you why I think tomorrow we just might hear Gary say nothing at all. And it has to do with the fact that there's very little free agent money to go around this year. There's a massive, massive drop from the Houston Rockets to the next team with the most money, given cap holds and different things like that. If you're not signed by the Rockets, you're probably not being signed to a very big contract. And this is what leads me to believe that Gary will probably either opt into his contract, meaning we hear nothing, or he'll sign a very short-term contract with the Raptors, which allows him to have a great season and then get the bag. Because let me show you a list of the NBA top players in terms of their earnings individually. Gary's certainly not in the top 10. In fact, he currently sits at 76th on this list. You can see him here at $18.5 million, just below OG. He deserves to be here, and some of these guys no longer do. Some of them deserve to be much higher, like DeJounte, and there's other guys that are gonna get paid. But I think Gary should deserve to be in this realm with the Wigginses and the Barretts if he has a great breakout year. So let's go back to the end of the season and see if we can get a sense for where Gary was at when the season ended. So you're not really, you know, uh, every year is different. You have different teams, you have different coaches, different game plans, different players playing against, you know, some of the coaching be situational, so whether it may be in a game. But again, free agency wise, uh, again, it's going to be what it's going to be. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's best for me and my family. Uh, obviously, I'm going to talk to the organization, I sit down and talk to my team, and we go in and see how everything plays out. Uh, I love Toronto. It's been a great time here so far. Restaurants are great. It's a good city. It's a great place to be. So, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Pi. You know, they show a lot of love. It's a Thai food restaurant. It's pretty good. Honestly, right now, it's just, you know, reflecting. You know, reflecting on what was going on, what transpired, you know, whether it's uh, individual players, whether it's coaching, you know, front office, you know, just anything. Uh, I would say, you know, it changed a little bit. You know, obviously, in the year, we're starting, you know, we're going 35 minutes, uh, you know, then not starting, playing about 20 minutes, then. Guys coming in and trade and minutes go down and, you know, just balancing that and trying to play it and everybody, you know, not just me, but, you know, we was trying to go out there and roll with the punches as best we could. No matter what the role changes, you know, the end game, the end goal doesn't. So, you know, you got to go out there and continue to, you know, make it work. How do you think all those things, the conversations sort of off the court played a part in this team's success this season? I wouldn't say it really had no big part, but, you know, obviously people are going to say anything and clickbait and different type of stuff and take certain quotes so you know it's gonna be what's gonna be you hear it but obviously you don't listen to it or it gives you no thought about it it just comes with, it comes with the game. Now I might be crazy and you're welcome to tell me so in the comments but to my mind it sounds like not only does Gary sound 
as if he's comfortable with what happened this past season and understands it, it sounds like he has an understanding of the fact that he's on a team. He seems humble. He seems accepting. Maybe that we can attribute to having a dad that played in the NBA as a very important role player. When we start to look at some of the teams that went deepest in the playoffs this year, we notice that we've got a couple teams that have a very high payroll with their first three players, but then we have it spread out over the course of the roster after that, giving them an actual bench. I think Gary and other players on the Toronto Raptors roster recognize this. I think they're all more than aware that the Raptors as a franchise have positioned themselves very well salary cap wise. The idea that players like Gary or OG are upset because of their role is nothing more than red sauce. Red sauce on this channel represents things you hear so much that you believe them, even though they're kind of bullshit. It gets on you, it sticks to you. So the first bit of red sauce is the idea that Gary wants to get paid some astronomical number. Gary's got good agents. He's got a dad that was in the NBA. And in spite of popular opinion, it's not like the franchise and Gary aren't working together. Franchises and players are not constantly against each other. They have open conversations with themselves, the owners, the agents, and the front office to determine where they think they're going to line up. I don't get any sense from Gary or his camp that they're terribly upset with the $18.5 million. Now, would he like another $2 million? Probably. So might we see him sign a short-term contract here? Yes. But mark my words, it is red sauce to believe that OG or Gary or any of these guys are extremely disgruntled with their role on the Raptors this past season. They understand it and they know where the franchise is headed towards where Denver's at. That's where we're going. And there is no notion of a complete impending rebuild coming here. Anyone saying that Darko coming in is a sign that we're moving off of Siakam, OG, and Fred is a nutcase. Now, the second bit of red sauce has to do with our free agents and cap holds. That's namely Jakob, Fred, and Gary combined. The vast majority of sources talking about the Raptors these days talk as if we can't keep all three of Jakob, Fred, and Gary. That's horseshit. That is red sauce. I'll take you back to the trade deadline when I made a video responding to the Jakob Pirtle trade and talking about how expert and marksman the salary cap positioning was to take the Raptors into this 2023 offseason. <laughs> San Antonio likes that deal. They take Kem off of our hands. We get freaking a, a very improved team on the court. We get an improved team off the court in the spiritual sense, in the chemistry sense with Pirtle. But most importantly, it's what they do to the books. Check this out. Here, let me move Justin out of the way and make it bigger. They leave us two million, less than two million below the luxury tax threshold for this year. Defer any need to deal with that until the summer. They'll have three premier free agents that all have bird rights. We could extend them all and go into a luxury tax year if we don't get the deals we like. Because what's important is that we've positioned our salary. So what have the Raptors done for me lately? They've completely impressed the shit out of me. This stat alone, after the Jakob Pertl deal and moving Kem's contract in exchange for some picks, this is Chef's Kiss approved. Mwah! <laughs> Now, since I recorded that, I haven't just cut my hair. I've done some math. And at that time, I didn't even do any math. It is simply a truism that because we have bird rights on all those players, we can keep them all and go into a luxury era. The thing is, the Raptors organization doesn't seem ready to do that just yet. But does it mean we can't keep all three? No. In fact, the math is super favorable. Let's take a look here closely. These are our contracts, okay? You'll notice that Fred is not on here and Jakob's not on here. It's because this time of year, they're considered cap holds. They're accounted for here, but not later. So we still have lots of cap room, especially if Gary stays on in 18. And what you'll notice if we go to the top is, Gary's still on here, so he's accounted for. But we still need to deal with Fred and Jakob with 40, and that's not gonna be quite enough. However, if we take a look at down here, 
at some of the key dates coming up, the deadlines, there's some room to maneuver and it comes in the form mainly of this one right, where's the 30th? Right here, Thad Young. So he can be paid a million dollars and then we don't pay them the other seven. So there's seven million all by itself just by not extending Thad the whole eight million. We can literally have seven million to pay Jakob and then we can just deal with Fred and still have cap space going forward for our 13th of our pick. In fact, nothing is stopping us from paying Thad less or going on a mid-level, a portion of the mid-level, and bringing him back. So Thad might not get his whole contract, but he still might be a Raptor next year. Crazy. Guys, the notion that we're not keeping all three of these players is red sauce. I want to go back to this graphic of NBA most cap space 2023 in the Houston Rockets. It was no surprise Freddie didn't opt into his player option. So what are we doing with him? Well, we're gonna allow Fred to speak to other teams. Teams like Houston are gonna be interested in him potentially as a vet with a ring on his finger to mentor their young crop of thoroughbreds. And he's gonna assess his value. And then the Raptors are potentially just gonna match that value, that contract. And this sort of scenario allows Fred to come back to the Raptors, not wondering if the grass was greener on the other side. He can literally feel confident that he got the best value at a key point in his basketball career. He can get the bag, come back to the wraps, and I hope have this type of contract going forward. Watch this. The structure of one of the contracts up here, and that is Chris Boucher, because this is the type of contract that I like to see guys like Fred signing. You'll notice that Chris's contract goes down in value each year. That means that the player got paid when they signed the contract, but because they want to be surrounded by good other players on the team, they take a team-friendly deal like this where it's front-heavy and then goes back. I would love and not be surprised to see Fred sign a deal like this with the Toronto Raptors. So guys, I hope that exploits the rest of us. In the next videos, we're gonna talk about the coaching changes. We're gonna talk about my pick, the guy that I would take at the 13th overall pick. We're gonna talk about these rumors of trading up in the draft, and we're gonna look at a whole lot more. So for tonight, for tomorrow, for all day, cross your fingers with me and send positive vibes to Gary Trent Jr. that he will be returning to his second home here in Toronto next season. I hope we hear nothing from Gary Trent Jr. in the next 24 hours. Cheers, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I go missing for ages. If you wanna know when I come back, with a series of videos, you're gonna to wanna to hit that bell. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. And thanks to those of you that reached out and said, what do you think of the coaching change? What do you, who do you want in the draft? All of these other things. Love, blessings, all of those things, guys. Be well, and remember, it's all about the Larrys. Cheers. But I better be quiet now. This is Chef's Kiss approved. Why don't you stick around and have more Thai food, Gary? There you go.